The odds are very, very high that you've used a Power Apps portal. Millions do every month. But did you know that now portals can install as an app on your desktop, mobile phone, or even your Xbox? The Leap is going to show us how easy it is to create progressive web apps in Power Apps portals today on PowerCat Live. Welcome to PowerCat Live. My name is Phil Topness with the PowerCat team, and today I'm here with the Leap Singh, Principal Architect on the Power Apps Portals team. Hey, the Leap. Talk a little bit about your background. Like, how did you get this role through Microsoft? It's actually pretty interesting. Uh, I think I've been working in Microsoft forever. <laughs> <laughs> I got hired uh, from college uh, as a PM in Dynamic CRM team, and since I think uh, 2016, I've been doing portals like various iteration of it. And since 2019, I've been doing power. Apps nice. Portals. And we have promises to be an interesting area. And you're going to talk yeah. about one new feature. Uh, but before we get there, for those that haven't seen portals, right, they mentioned with Canvas apps or model apps, what are power apps portals? I think imagine this way, like with power apps, you have been revolutionizing your employee right. experiences. Now start thinking external, start going outside your employees, your partners, your customers, your like uh, people who want to just get some information yeah. uh, out of the system. All of that audience can be accessed by utilizing Power Apps portals, which allows you to build a website which can be used by your customers, your partners anonymously through a variety of identities, like Facebook accounts, yeah. like Google accounts. And that's where Portal comes in. Like they allow you to create websites for customers of your application. And low-code external-facing websites, I assume. And like, if we talk about a platform, it's low code. is low-code. Low um, so talk about, there's, there's a new feature that you guys have been working on. What, what is it? Is this new interesting technology called Progressive Web Apps or PWA. We had this in terms coming in and we were like, hey, we have like portals, which are website. Progressive Web Apps are kind of like extensions to it. So why don't we try doing that? Like, why don't we make portals enabled? as progressive web apps, because the moment we do that, it becomes a full-fledged mobile right. application, which you can run on your mobile phones, which you can run on your tablets, or you can run it on desktop, you can run it in Chromebooks, you can run it on Xbox, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Cross-platform application without writing any single code. So completely no code. I don't think I want your portals on my Xbox. I'm going to be honest, leave. <laughs> Even if it's possible. <laughs> Like, you'll be surprised. Like, let's say you have an export sub Xbox support okay. problem. Okay, fair. All right. Now, now I see it. Like you want to do it with your device. So can you show us how to turn this on? Yeah, absolutely. I am in my portal design studio. And you will see that there's pages, there's like uh, components and theming and all that uh, standard stuff which you are aware of. And then there's a new option, like right at the bottom called Progressive Web App. So all I have to do is go here and enable progressive web apps. Like that's the most important step. Like uh, on pretty much that is the step if you- You made it sound pretty them. easy when the intern did it in two weeks, but that is the switch is even easier. That's pretty good. <laughs> exactly, like you, will, you should be faster than how much time it took for our intern to do it. <laughs> that's the aim. Um, cool, so once you have enabled it, uh, it actually shows you a bunch of options and I, I'll quickly talk about a few of these. The most important one is called customized PWA. So when you create a mobile app, there are a bunch of customization of your application name. Uh, so when someone installs it or when you ship it on app stores, it start displaying that name. You'll give it a description. You'll have like a starting page because remember, like portal is a website. So website have a lot of pages and in your apps, you will always want to have like a start page, which could be different than home page of your website. Hmm. So that's why that is one configuration which we allow. When an app loads up for the first time, there's usually a splash screen which comes in. So we allow you to customize that. And then you have your app icons and like the configurations around that, like right. which we allow you to set up. And all of that is like no code. You don't have to write any code for that. Uh, I'm just providing a title for my app. Like I'll actually leave it as it is. Uh, I have a description which I can change if I want to. This is my starting page of the app. I select one of the pages. Uh, I can change the splash screen background to be something else, like from this nifty little like um, color picker. 
And then all I have to do is like select an icon and icons mm-hmm. are very specific in size 512 by 512. That's it. That's all I had to do. Like after this, my portal is actually enabled as a progressive web app. I can quickly uh, go and preview it as well. And I have it opened on my desktop right now. Mm-hmm. And the moment you'll open it in a browser, you will see an install option. And that is one of the ways you can distribute progressive web apps through like directly install from browser. So no need to even ship it to app stores. Like someone can directly access it from browser. So the moment I open this website, it actually shows me, hey, this is available as an app. So I click on this right. and it's going to install it as an app. And um, as the browser is actually installing it as an app, like it will actually show me options to uh, like pin it to taskbar, pin it to start menu, create like a desktop shortcut. If you want to like enable it when your like browser or when your like machine reboots, you can even do that. And all of that required zero code. I have not written any code till now. So I'm just going to say allow. And the moment I do that, like you will notice a very interesting thing. At the bottom of my taskbar, there's actually an app icon. Like this is the exact same website, uh, which you'll see opened in browser here. And that exact same website will open when I click on this taskbar icon. And this time it opens up as an app. This is the progressive web app we just installed. So the beauty is like I had to write zero code. This thing became an app on my desktop as well as my phone. So we're going to show like how it appears on phone as well. It yeah, exactly you, gave, you gave me the icon ahead of them. It's right here. It's an icon on my phone. I just linked it on there. And it, yeah, it looks really good on the phone. <laughs> exactly. That's pretty and amazing. That, that's the beauty of it. Once people have installed it, they don't have to do any update. It will mm. automatically make the changes for everyone in the world. So all the time you're running a single version of your app, which if people are already publishing multiple like device and multiple like OS targeted apps, yeah. they will be like super happy about that's the biggest problem, right? Yeah, like, that's uh, a lot easier. Targeting multiple versions for multiple devices and multiple platforms, like that what makes it complicated. So that's what we are simplifying with this functionality. And now you talked about uh, how it can go on a mobile device, right? And I showed it it's right here on my phone. Uh, how should someone think about this? Because, you know, Power Apps has a mobile client too for building mobile apps. You know, why is this different? Why would you choose one or the other? So I think the major differentiator is not that, hey, this is also a mobile app. Major differentiator is, is in the scenario. Like portals are for external facing uh, apps. Like uh, when you are creating apps through Power Apps, like Canvas app, model driven app, those are for your employees. Uh, working on data which is uh, available for your employees. Right. But Poodles are for your external audience, like external, like your customers, they could be your partners, they could be citizens if you're like a government organization. Yeah. And in those cases, these applications will be available for like your external audience. Uh, so it will be different in terms of whom you are targeting, uh, although the capability uh, available in like both type of applications is kind of similar. And I, I suppose it's actually possible with the millions of people that are using portals. There's a lot of people that are watching this that have probably used uh, Power Apps portals and never even knew it. Especially like I think in last one year, um, like when we had worked with a lot of government organizations mm-hmm. on things like vaccination appointments, right. things like COVID test scheduling, like inadvertently, like I think a lot of people ended up using it. Like. Personally, in my family, everyone in my family used a portal hosted by King County to uh-huh. get our vaccination appointment. So in this new world, as you have to go faster and faster to digitize your business processes, you will uh, require ability to get multiple touch points with your customers. Mm-hmm. So whether if your customers like phones, like you want to be there, if your customers like uh, tablets, you want to be available there and desktops, you like you are already available. Mm-hmm. So that's where PWA will help. And it's all on customer's choice, right? Like some people like to install a lot of app on their phone and use it. And yeah. some people like to just use it in browser. So both will be available as an option for the customer. And so uh, this is a relatively new feature. What's planned for it? Where do you, where do you go from here? Like today, um, we actually offer uh, like one device capability, which mm-hmm. is like the offline experience. So you can actually mm-hmm. take a page and make it available offline for read-only scenarios. So let's say you're doing FAQ, you can make those available offline, right? Right. 
But now, next steps for us is going to be going more and more deeper into these capabilities. So things right. like push notifications, um, that's like interesting one. Uh, we also want to do things like uh, accelerometer, like GPS, yeah. like those kind of standard stuff, right? Which you expect from uh, like native apps. So we will make uh, those available as like kind of like plug and play uh, SDK kind of a thing uh, with Poodle. So you can develop on top of it. That's awesome. And so if someone is watching this and they've got an environment, they want to test out uh, Portal's progressive web apps, can they just go turn on that switch? Is it that easy? Yep, exactly. Like uh, at any point of time, if you have created a portal, like uh, even if you created a portal back in 2016, <laughs> uh, you can actually go ahead. This functionality is available for everyone and you can just enable it through Portal Design Studio. Well, that's great. It's definitely worth trying out. Delete, thanks for taking the time to show this to us. And we'll link your docs in the description so everyone can try this out. Awesome. Thanks for having me, Phil. And it was great talking to you. Yeah, you too. Now, before you go, we are making new videos every week. Click this Microsoft logo to subscribe and you'll be the first to see them. And look over here for a couple of videos that can make you a power platform expert.